So the excretions are finished. Yep. How long have the excretions been around? Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Eighty-five. Yeah. Ten years of shit. Really no point now. What do I think of the new band? Yeah, we play to nobody. They play. Uh, they they feel that speed compensates for uh, musical talent. So you're embarrassed of the band name, Excretions? No, no. I'm, yeah. Well, yes, I am. Do you want to be known as an excretion? I guess not. You guess not. It sounds like something that came out of the mind of a of a 16 year old who's rebelling against well, society. How old were you back then when you started the band? I wasn't with a band no. originally back then. I mean, who wants to go see a band called Excretions? It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's absurd. Let's go see the fucking Excretions. Fuck. You're kidding? Would you would you pay money to see a band called the Excretions? I mean, I I know uh, musicians country western musicians who are making 140 bucks a fucking night to play. I'll be lucky if I make that in 10 fucking shows. I, I don't know if I want it. I mean, I'm getting old. Look at me, I'm 30. 30? That's fucking old, eh? <laughs> wow. We're the original things. Great. Never got a chance. <laughs> I'm gonna ask the owner what's playing in the car. What happens to you playing in your car? <laughs> I, I take the fifth. <laughs> it's uh, the um, Dance Mix 95. Dance Mix 95. Is that Kermit? No, I, I drew it on. Oh. And, uh, okay, Dance Mix 95. I mean, made it to this. As advertised on uh, Much Music. Thank you. Just think, you might have won the ball. Good evening, I'm Ona Fletcher. Students sent an anti-cutback message to Queen's Park today in a style reminiscent of a bygone era. A protest by a crowd of several hundred angry students saw the vengeful storming of the legislature, trashing of property and a brief occupation of the legislature lobby. <laughs> It began as a boisterous protest by several hundred students from universities, colleges and high schools across Metro. And then it got louder. And louder. Until finally, having already passed barricades, the students saw their opening. Inside, they were confronted by a wall of police. After a 40 minute sit in, the students were escorted out. triumphant but still determined to have their message heard. No future, no education, just a long unemployment line, That's no right. welfare, yeah. no right. This is a government of the rich, by the rich, and for the rich, and we're not yeah. When it was over, two people were under arrest. Two guards were treated for injuries, and a big cleanup job was left for legislature officials. Broken glass and placards were strewn across the lobby floor, and graffiti sprawled on the walls. Officials estimate the damage at $10,000.
This is uh, just disgusting in the sense of coming into the fallen buildings and, and causing this amount of damage. I've never seen anything like this before. We Although students protested in earnest today, the education minister is still talking budget cuts. John Snobelin is hinting he might cut education funding by $1 billion. And marchers demonstrated across the West. 4,000 were on hand in Vancouver and another 4,000 at the B.C. legislature in Victoria. Big trouble at Queen's Park as another demo gets out of hand. Angry students over the barricade, smashing through the hundred-year-old front doors and staring and shouting down nervous security and cops in the ledge lobby. Before all of that, just another noisy, Harris-hating bunch on the march. I know that you're angry. I'm very angry, too, and everyone here is angry. But don't make today about violence, please. I think that it's it's counterproductive. I don't think that uh, it's in the best interest of the, the student cause. Uh, we were here to have a peaceful protest. We're here to, to prove that education is a right. Uh, nothing is proved by violence. Nothing is proved by, by rushing the door and breaking the law and trying to get into Queen's Park. Two cops hurt, two protesters charged. Eventually, the throng was off to Varsity Arena for a quieter evening show of strength. Think of what that means and how phenomenally profoundly... Queen's Park veterans say it was the worst display they've ever seen there. $10,000 damage to the doors and lobby. Sure was a crazy one at the ledge. Just happened to be Bob Ray's last day at the helm. Tomorrow, Beaches Woodbine MPP Frances Lankins expected to throw her hat into the ring to take over the NDP leadership. She joins Peter Cormos in the fight for that top job. While workers clean up shattered glass and remove graffiti from the historic walls of the Ontario legislature, progressive conservatives at Queen's Park may soon be facing an even greater threat, a province-wide strike by tens of thousands of government workers. The honeymoon is over. Dwight Ryan, Channel 11 News. Attention, speak NBC. Speaker's Corner. I can't wait to do this. Oh. I got something to say to the mayor. I have to find that guy from last week. The problem is not black or white. We've decided to name the baby Moses. Of course. This is real. Speaker's Corner. Talk is deep. How much does Mike Harris and his government pay for us to go to school? He pays 60% of us to go. Oh, we got a 10% increase. Oh, jeez. It's been 10%. Oh, no. Last year was 10%. No. This year was 10%. By the time our kids go to school, no, no, no. it is going to be no. full paid tuition. He is paying for us to go to school. Our tax money is paying for us to go to school. Thank you very much, Mike Our Harris. Our tax money is paying thank for us to go to school. Thank you very much. Parliament government, thank you for paying my school, paying 60%. I'm in the system myself. And he's gotten money from my pocket, cutting it from the Board of Education, which is ruining my future. He doesn't want us to be on welfare, but he's cut, cutting our education that way we don't get a good one. Like, come on, get into your effing head. Excuse me for not, like, not hating Mike Harris and jumping on the Let's Bash of Mike Harris. I don't want to hate him. I just don't want I am want totally behind you in everything you do. No. You're no. finally the no. first. No, no. I not agree. Everything. Not no. everything. No. You're the no. first person not who's everything. actually Welfare taking care of our idea. country. Thank I you, Mike Harris. Mike. That's all I have <laughs> no. to say. There was a student rally not too long ago, and basically... Some kids, you know, broke up some uh, buildings and uh, parliament type thing, you know. All I have to say is, like, it's about time that students said something about what's going on here, you know. A 20% hike in our tuition is a lot of money. I'm sorry, like, I went to university. I barely got by, you know. I couldn't afford to go. Sure, some property was damaged and stuff, but, I mean, it people really... maimed and killed, but hey. But other than that, Damn it, we made that, a point. Go to Germany, education is free. Why can't can it be like that, you know? We, we are considered one of the top G7 countries in the world. Why the f*** not? Education is basically, it's a right. It's not something that, you know, 
we should be striving for here. It's, it's basically a right. You cut welfare, you cut unemployment to a certain extent. You don't cut school. The youth okay. no. are educated. Wait, 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 no. They need to be educated. Listen. You're cutting school okay. and you're cutting government government grants are already cut and no. you're cutting government loans. Okay, whatever. There's I, for one, don't subscribe to the to the uh, philosophy that the government owes us. Unlike these unfortunate people who try and break into our legislature, people that are trying to sue the government because they're not happy with the welfare they're getting, where did our country ever come to the realization that they think that the government owes them? To borrow words from a, one famous U.S. politician, it's not, what, it's not what the country can do for us, but what we can do for the country. It's about time the government finally pissed off a group of people enough to make them go and uh, basically just show them how desperate they are. Um, I, you know, don't exactly agree with breaking into uh, federal buildings or provincial buildings simply because it's going to cost us money in the long run with our taxes, but it's about bloody time that uh, somebody stood up to the government to let them know that they're in a bad situation. For a lot of these people, they're living in uh, pretty much piss-poor conditions, trying to get an education so that they can become productive members of society by cutting all these taxes. You're preventing that from happening. What I wanted to talk about was uh, what I saw on CBC last night on the news. It was about a, a middle-aged man that was going around with an axe, uh, totally destroying Royal Bank automatic tellers. And, and everybody was trying to figure out why he would do this, especially the uh, slick executive people at uh, Royal Bank. And they're trying to say, oh, maybe the guy was angry that he didn't get a loan. Some silly, silly remark like that. I could see why he'd probably do it. It's probably because he's sick of the Royal Bank and all the other banks making so much money while the rest of us are complaining about these harsh economic times and the banks are rolling it all in. And I could probably understand that it might be because this poor guy who has some ordinary account like me and like a lot of other people watching keeps getting charged all the exorbitant uh, banking fees to get your own money. I mean, 50 cents to use a banking machine to get your own money, which the bank uses to get all these major profits. A person shouldn't be charged 50 cents every time they use it, because that can skyrocket. And if you've only got under $500 in the bank to begin with, like a lot of people, that starts adding up. I don't want to pay for these people's rates. So, if anybody recognizes this guy from the photo that they had on the television, don't turn him in. He's doing a good thing. It's the holidays, today's the wedding of the little painted doll. This is a poem we made up for our Urban Poet Society. Yeah. We have a particular favorite one that we want you to hear. I'll read the first part. Okay. Green grass turned brown. Now you open it. Why are you so It says, two trees in the park. <laughs> Originally were seeds. Okay, and that's our take on the city. That's, that's our take on the city. That's what we see in Toronto. A brown stream of city pop. Big people going to the plus size store, feeling small and insignificant. Blue and dirty gray in the sky. Two bums sleeping on the street. Oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> the jolly green giants boogied. Yeah. And lost children are walking blindly. That's all I have. <laughs> okay, so bombs were sent to the pig slaughterhouse, but pork is tasty on my plate. Spoken Japanese babes head into a booze can. It's a six-dimensional chess game, and you lose. The men spitting at each other, and I'm an alien. Oh, it's cold. Puke on foot. Mm. Him smoking cigarettes on a corner, getting cancer and dying. I didn't write this. It was like a group effort thing. Okay, okay. green mucus dripping from everyone's noses. Uh, one sexy gray, one sexy guy saying hi. Give me a Kleenex. That was really good. Beige cat dead in an alley. Five salads. Homies on the subway are better than eating dead animal, dead animals. Yeah, here goes. 